is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. An hour of hardcore Miami Heat talk. Clay Ferrero here, Ira Winderman there. And uh, Ira, I, I want to start this with something that we barely even mentioned in sure. the cross talk. Because the Heat are on the verge of, of moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. And it's almost it almost kind of plays into where I wanted to go with this, the fact that we didn't even mention it. Jimmy Butler. And, you know, we talked about what he said post-game and, and stuff like that, but we didn't talk about his performances over the last few games. And I think we're kind of getting to this point, Ira, where we're, we're taking for granted what he does on a game-in, game-out basis, and especially in the postseason. And what we've seen over the last few games, the fact that he, he just senses when something is needed, he finds a way to get it done – he is a superstar in this league. I'm done with the whole, oh, is he a top 12, top 10, top 15, whatever. What I'm starting to see from Jimmy Butler, and it's something that we saw in the bubble, and it's something that I you know, I, I wish I had remembered and not been a pris- prisoner of the moment over and over again. He knows when it's time. And I thought it was really interesting, Ira, if you read Cooper Moorhead did a great breakdown from Heat.com about what this series has been about to this point. And the Philadelphia 76ers have basically said, in this series, we're okay with Jimmy Butler scoring. We're okay with him going to the basket. We're okay if he gets inside. We are more comfortable with him shooting closer to the rim than we are with him passing out and finding an open three-point shooter. So they've been taking away his passes. What I thought was interesting in the last few games, Ira, what has Jimmy Butler told us over and over again ever since he got here? I don't care about scoring. I don't care how many points I put up. And I think almost to a fault, we feel like he is sometimes selfishly unselfish. But what did we see in games three and four? He goes out there, he scores 33. Goes out there, he scores 33-38. He scores 40 in game four. They lose. And even though they were close in the fourth quarter at times, it didn't feel like they had control of that game. Ira, last night, he goes out, he scores early, realizes that Philly has to make an adjustment, then boom, all of a sudden Max Strews starts hitting. Guys start hitting shots. I just feel like I want to give him a little bit of credit here at the top because I think we're starting to take him for granted a little bit. And and I'm not saying you, but I just think like as a fans, media, I don't think we realize just how good this guy is. And and I want to give him credit for what we've seen over the last few games. You know, it was interesting. I was writing an answer to an Ask Ira question, and I kind of stopped. i got to be honest here. I'm going to sort of take people inside how soup is made and how what we do. A lot of times when I predict these series, you know, you do the matchups, you go heat and six or whatever. It's almost hard to pick against the heat because I just don't need the goddamn blowback. So there are times <laughs> I honestly thought, so and true. it might be in the conference finals also where he would lose. I just don't want to deal with the bull crap. So that's that. The point I'm trying to make is this. I, I had an ask Ira question and my answer was this. I do not believe you can win an NBA championship without a top 10 player. Then, then I sat down and I said to myself, is Jimmy Butler a top 10 player? And honestly, Clay, when I went through the list, I had a very hard time getting him there. In other words, I, I, I want you to be honest here for a second. No one's listening. It's just you and me. Who's the, <laughs> who's the better player, Jimmy Butler or Jason Tatum? Honestly. Clay Ferraro, honestly. So, okay, no, I, and I'm not – I, I would have said Jason Tatum. I would have said Jason okay. Tatum. Two, here, and here's the ago. point. And I do think – I think he's he, he's the better scorer. He's the better offensive so, player. Exactly. And here, here's the point I'm trying to make. So I can easily give you 10 players who are ahead of the, better than Jimmy Butler, and I know Heat Nation and diehard Heat fan are going to go, no, he's our guy and all that. But what I'm saying is this. But when Jimmy Butler is playing as a top 10 player, It changes everything. So the deal with Jimmy Butler is is, uh, if you're rating players 1 through 10, you're not having Jimmy in your list. You're just not. You're just not. And if you're going 1 through 15, you might not either. That's why Jimmy might not make an all-NBA team this year. But there are moments in the bubble, leaning over on the side there out of his last breath, 40 points in Philadelphia, facilitating and doing what he did last night, where Jimmy is a top 10 player and arguably – is a top five player because when he's playing like an MFer, and it's all about the moment, Jimmy Butler in the moment. Matter of fact, I think Jimmy Butler at his son of a bitch best is a better player than Jason Tatum because Jimmy Butler will take it. 
he will seize it. He won't have one of those Jason Tatum games like Jason did the other day where he was a non-factor and a complimentary player. So what I'm saying is this. The whole Jimmy Butler experience comes down to this. When he's playing as a top 10 player, this Heat team is as good as anyone, at least in the Eastern Conference. It's been a little up and down. We know he doesn't care as much about the regular season. Like Big O said in our crosstalk, he doesn't care as much about scoring. But when you see the complete Jimmy Butler, which is sort of like the Cadbury Easter egg, it shows up every now and then, but it's not here 12 months a year, you can see how special the Heat are. Right now, Jimmy Butler's playing like a top 10 player. Right now, Jimmy Butler's probably playing closer to a top five player. Uh, drop your questions or comments in the chat. Feel free to weigh on on this topic because, I, you know, it's rare that Ira and I genuinely disagree, but I think we do here. And, and for this reason, I'll admit here, I am somebody who I value performances in the playoffs, mm -hmm. in big moments, far, far more than I do. the and, and, you know, this is a crazy take that I've, I've had forever and I'm never going to let it go. I think Robert Ory should be in the Hall of Fame. I, I just think that there are certain players who – because of what they do in the big moments, oh, they deserve a bit more credit. I think think with Jimmy word. Butler, it, it, look, it, is it frustrating that he clearly gets bored during the regular season at times? It doesn't feel like he has to put his foot uh, all the way down in the. Yeah, yeah, it is, and and especially if like especially if you're covering the team like Ira and you get to ask questions and people are peppering your timeline with, "Where's Jimmy Butler? What's he doing?" Right. Or you have to write a column where you're you're answering questions and. I get it. And and when we're hosting an hour long show and they're losing a game to the Knicks and whatever, I yes. But I when it matters and and I think the thing that when you ask me if he's a top 5 top 10 player and you compare him to Jason Tatum, do I think Jason Tatum's peak is going to be better than Jimmy Butler's peak? Absolutely. Do I think that during the regular season, do I think that most of the time Jason Tatum puts on better performances than Jimmy? Yes, I do. But I feel like the sixth sense that Jimmy Butler has for the game is so rare. And I don't mm -hmm. know, if you look around the NBA right now, who are the guys that, that are, are close to Jimmy when it comes to that? I think you put uh, LeBron James, obviously. LeBron okay. James, I, I think it's the one thing where, I've always said this about Jimmy. I think if LeBron was a B plus to an A, A minus at everything on the floor, Jimmy Butler is similar. Jimmy Butler is maybe a, a B minus at, across, the, at the, board. across yes. the board. And it's rare to find a player who does that and then also elevates his game in the postseason. And that's where I put – so when you ask me if I'm comparing Jason Tatum to Jimmy Butler, I think it's a great comparison because I don't feel like at this point in his career Jason Tatum is anywhere near Jimmy Butler when it comes to that sixth sense. And I think specifically in the playoffs when you're trying to win big games and you're trying to move on – I think that sixth sense is so valuable and it takes you to a different level. And, and matter of fact, I'm going to have this thing careening off the rail so you can bring it back on as the professional studio host that you are. It's not just Jimmy Butler in this case. To me, it's the entire heat. When you get the best of each individual player, this team's at another level. Yeah. In other words, bam out of bio. Same thing. How many times have you got, and I come on Wednesday on our Sloman's Home Security inside the paint show and spoken about where's Bam? Where's his offense? I didn't notice him last night. How does he only get two rebounds? How does he only get three rebounds? And then there are other times you see the best up. Same with Kyle Lowry this season. Same with Tyler Hero. So it's really interesting. I think the Heat's stars have this very wide spectrum of what they are on a game-to-game -game basis. We have seen Really not so good Tyler Hero a bunch of times. Yes. But we've seen freaking fantastic Tyler Hero a bunch of times. The key to this team, as the competition level gets tougher, Milwaukee or Boston next, if the Heat get out of this round, then probably Golden State or Phoenix after that, you're going to have to have more of the nights where it's not just one. And it's not just two. Almost sound like LeBron here. But it's going to have to be three or four. That's the thing about this Heat team. They have players when you get the best of these players, then these players are at a completely different level and can raise you to the next level. So that's what I think we're talking about Jimmy Butler here also is, can you get the absolute best out of Jimmy in more of these important games? And Clay, you were spot on. Thursday in Philadelphia seems to be one of those moments. Yeah, and, and I think it's important that they're they're targeting that already. And, you know, 